Right folks, welcome back to the channel. Here we have the AUD USD chart in front of us or the Australian dollar against the US dollar, right? So we're going to be going over a higher time frame outlook of this as well as a lower time frame case study. So just to kick off the analysis on the higher time frames, what we've had over here is we've had our bearish structure over here. We've seen price giving us consistent breaks to the downside. So we've seen a structural low down here and we've seen another structural low down here. And we've seen another structural breakdown here. So overall, we have we are bearish in terms of our overall structure, right? So we're currently dealing now between this swing high up here and this swing low down here. Now, something I want to bring to people's attention is why isn't this a break of structure? You may be looking at it thinking, why isn't this a break of structure? But actually, if we look at this closely, this high over here didn't actually get broken with the body, right? This here was simply a sweep of liquidity because it didn't close below strong enough for me so this here becomes a sweep of liquidity and this is something to bear in mind later on just now when we go into our higher time frame analysis our intraday analysis so here we have a sweep of liquidity and what that means is this low over here so this low at the price point of 61706 becomes a weak low this here is a weak low and simply put, the reason why this low is weak is because this low has... ...failed to break above the last high. So this is the last high, this is the last low, and this low over here has failed to produce a new high. We had a sweep, not a break. So this again, I'm going to reiterate for people, this is a sweep of liquidity. It did not close below the old high. The old high is over here. We haven't seen a close and therefore it's a sweep of liquidity. With that being said now, this now becomes a weak low. And if we go to most recent price action, we were in a bit of a range, but overall the range has a downwards direction to it. What we have over here is we have a low down here in the daily discount. So this is a daily discount over here that tried to push up, making a somewhat of a new high. We're in the daily discount. Again, this 50% level over here represents what we call the EQ or the equilibrium. And this over here indicates a discount. Anything below the 50% level becomes a discount. So with that being said, this here is a weak low. Where we see the red line over here, whenever you see me mark out a red line on the charts, that delineates a weak low. So this in itself is a weak low. And so why is it a weak low? Just to go through again. Well, what did this what did this low actually achieve? This low tried to push up. And since then, we've had bears really win over. So we haven't seen this low over here produce anything significant. So this here is a weak low. So I expect in the next few weeks, price to get down to and below this weak low over here. So that's at 62,712. 62,712 is the next overall price movement I expect on AUD USD. Now let's go down to the four hour time frame and see how, I, how, I'm, dissect, how I'm dissecting, sorry, the four hour time frame. So again, the four hour time frame, we saw a shift, a bullish shift over here in that daily discount. So this over here represented our market structure shift, right? So we had a market structure shift over here just like this. So we had a low that produced a high. This low over here produced the all time low in the discount before the break of structure to the upside. And so from here, you need to understand or you have to understand that this now becomes our bullish break of structure, right? This is a clear break of structure in the daily discount, right? OS or break of structure. Now, from here, we had a retracement into a fair value gap. And since then, we've had a really deep bullish price action movement. This actually came into a daily premium. So we understand that this H4 bullishness was into a daily premium. So you need to understand how I'm integrating all the specific time frames together. This here reached a daily premium. And now since then, what's happened is if we quickly use a Fibonacci tool from the swing low up to the swing high, we understand we have a four hour equilibrium over here and anything below this four hour equilibrium becomes the discount. OK, this is the discount pricing over here. Now, it's important to understand that I have marked out a POI just over here, right? This here is the POI. This is a four hour POI or a four hour 
area of interest, AOI. Re they really mean the same thing, POI and AOI. So what makes a POI? This is something I've been through in a lot of videos, but there's three reasons this is actually a POI, right? There's three main reasons this is a POI. The first reason is that we've seen it break structure to the upside, right? So we've had we've had a structural break to the upside, right? We've seen this high over here get broken. Break of structure, right? BOS. Boss. So that's the first rule ticked off when it comes to understanding why this is a POI. The second reason it's a POI is simply because we've seen price leave a fair value gap. A very, very large buy side inefficiency was left over here. So if I label that again in blue, we understand we have an inefficiency in price over here. Very clear fair value gap just over here in price. Now the third thing why this is a POI, and this is from an ICT perspective or an ICT concept, is that we understand it's in the discount. So we understand it is something that's a low place to buy. So price essentially goes from premium, like I've set up here. Price goes from a daily premium and targets a discount. So this is one of the IPTA, one of, this is one of the IPTA principles, right? Not to get too off topic, but this is one of the main interbank price delivery algorithm principles. Price seeks two things. It seeks fair value gap and it seeks PD array. So essentially from premium to discount, discount to premium, premium to discount, discount to premium, right? So understanding PD arrays and fair value gaps, as well as understanding structure, really allows you to understand the higher probability POIs, okay? And this is the reason why this is a POI. And so now what we've had, we've had price bounce off this POI. So from here, we can easily expect somewhat of a bullish reaction, but ultimately I do expect price to come down to that daily week low down here. So that's the outlooks when it comes to AUD USD. But if we now go into a specific case study, right, I'm gonna be dissecting a buy trade, actually a counter trend buy trade that you could have taken from the four hour discount. So understand that this has come from a daily and a four hour discount, right? So we're gonna be looking at a daily and four hour discount. So we understand that we are below the equilibrium. This here is our equilibrium over here. So anything below the equilibrium represents an area where we should be looking to buy because prices are low. This is important to understand. We've been, we're going to be going over this in this particular video, right? Starting over here. So if we go to the 15 minute time frame, right? This is where the accumulation occurred inside that daily premium, sorry, inside that daily and four hour premium. Okay. So here's where we begin, right? Here's where we begin. Right, let's go down to the five minute time frame and dissect this in more detail. So the five minute time frame is a very powerful time frame. You don't always have to go this low, but the, f the five minute time frame gives you the intricacies in detail when it comes to understanding how the markets actually move and operate. So if we just quickly go down to where we were in price, where were we, where were we? Where were we over here? Oh, 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 oh. Brilliant. So here we have the price action for Tuesday, the 2nd of April, right? So this was the Tuesday, the 2nd, of April, right? So Tuesday, or if I could spell today, but 2nd of April, let's say, right? 2nd of April, 2024. So what we have over here is we had the Monday give us a bearish start to the week, right? So this was Monday's price action over here. All this, this down movement over here was Monday's price action. Again, what does Monday typically do? Monday typically sweeps Friday's price action, right? So what we saw over here is we saw, we saw Friday produce a ton of liquidity going into Monday. Monday gave us full sweep of all that liquidity, right? So we see a massive pool over here, a massive pool of sell side liquidity. And this is what Monday came in and swept, right? So Monday came in and swept all of that. So now let's go over the entry model from Tuesday, right? Again, the first thing to understand is that we had a very, very subtle sweep of the Asian low, right? This is how intricate ICT can get. So from here, we understand that this here was our manipulation for the markets. Right here was the manipulation in yellow. So what makes this the manipulation? A question I often get in the private community is, what makes this a manipulation? Well, we have the Asian range, which represents the accumulation, right? So this here is the ARL or the Asian range low. The Asian range low gets swept. So we understand that anything in Asia is an accumulation. We don't want to be trading during the Asian session as it's a low volume time of day. 
When we see a sweep of the Asian low or the Asian high, this typically represents a manipulation, right? So this is a what we call a one phase manipulation or a one one phase manipulation or one step manipulation, right? There's a two phase manipulation as well, which I've been through in some of my previous videos, but this is a one step manipulation, right? One phase manipulation. Now from here, once we swept the Asian low, right, we understand we're now looking to key off a fair value gap because we've had our structural break, right? So what's happened here is we've had a structural break just over here. This here represents our structural break over here. We had a boss, we had a previous boss just just before it, so we had a break of structure here, and we have a confirmed break of structure over here. So we've had an accumulation, manipulation, and now we're looking to catch the distribution. So how do we do that? There's two ways we can do it, right? The first thing to understand is you want to understand you want to key off a time-based fair value gap, right? So what we had over here is we had this fair value gap here at 9 o'clock UK time. So this, cor this corresponds to 4 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So this is within that ICT London session, right? So the first potential trade you could have taken was to understand the fact that once we've had a break of structure, right? Once we've had price break structures from this low up to this high, right? What we're typically looking for is we're, we're typically looking for a discounted fair value gap, right? So anything below this 50% level, if I made that a bit clear, anything below this 50% level is essentially a discounted fair value gap if there's a fair value gap beneath it right so fair value gap below the eq which represents a discount right so what we have over here if i quickly zoom into price is that we have a fair value gap just over here that price came in and mitigated right so this here becomes our particular poi so this is a poi i'm going to mark out in gray right and it's the same rules we went through earlier so it's about understanding that we have a poi over here and the reason why this is an order block or a poi is simply because it breaks structure. So if we quickly go over the rules to this, we understand we have a break of structure. We understand we've left a fair value gap, a time-based fair value gap, which is very important to understand, a time-based fair value gap, and we're in the discount. So these are the three things that validate this particular order block. And this now becomes a bullish order block, right? Bullish order block, bullish OB. Excellent. So the first place, the first trade you could have taken was a trade just off here like this safe stop loss just below the order block and you could have targeted a nice one to three or you could have targeted that high over here for a nice one to two or one to three i believe now the second place you could have also taken a trade was understanding that the new york session presented a fair value gap just over here so this here is the second order block you could have entered off right this is the second order block you could have entered off and now what makes this a valid order block well it makes it a higher probability order block because again we're keying off a time-based fair value gap right we're keying off a time-based fair value gap so a very key ict hack i'll give you is right always make sure your fair value gaps are time-based right we're looking for a time-based fair value gap okay because we've had our entry model over here right we've had price give us an accumulation over here with the dollar signs we've had an accumulation a manipulation and now we're simply looking to catch the distribution and the secret to catching the distribution is to key off a time-based fair value gap once you have a time-based fair value gap you're simply catching the distribution right you're catching the distribution right that's all you're doing you're catching the distribution and again this was a fantastic trade fantastic uh, order block over here which really did yield us good results right again price retraced in the London session, but overall we understand that you can trade in the Asian session as well because there's volatility due to the due to the Australian dollar itself, right? But this is a quick out quick outlook and overall case study as to how you could trade the AUD against the USD.